one of the questions that I get, and I get it from people who are Calvinists, who are non-Calvinists, who are just trying to figure out really how salvation works. Obviously, we know that we place our faith in Christ, but going back and just kind of looking at the, at the mechanics of it, particularly our heart, how does that work? How does, how does it work now? But also, how does it work back then? You know, before there was a cross. The problem that mankind has always had, I mean, from the very beginning, is his heart. The Bible says the heart is desperately wicked. And even from the moment that we are born, we go astray from the womb. So God wants to have something done with the heart. He commands us to fix our heart. Question is, do we fix our heart? And then if that's the case, if we don't, what does he do? Well, a couple of things. One, we call this term about us being having our heart turned or changed. We call that regeneration. We call that being born of above or some passages like John 3 would say being born again. And it's key to understand this term being born of or born. That's vitally important. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up, because there's also those who are taking classes, taking taking assignments from us on Patreon. And I would, I would offer this for anyone. It's free. If you want to go ahead and join Patreon, it's free. And through this, you're going to have different homework assignments. They're going to kind of just push you, make you write out, make you research, make you look up, make you earn, not just for the sake of sharing with someone else, but so that you can know for yourself, but also not just that you would know for yourself, because what good is to know to have information about the scriptures, to understand the scriptures and never convey it. So you want to have it so that you can convey it. And then also we'll look at how do you actually convey it? But the question is about our hearts. Well, what's understood, at least as I can tell by the scriptures, is that our hearts have to be changed. And that is a work of God. Jesus makes a statement, very important statement. As he speaks to Nicodemus, he says that truly, truly, I said to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so this word born again, we have from the Greek word genethe, which is from the Greek word genao. And so this word means to be born or to bear. So to be born, in this case, genethe anothen, which is to be born from above. It's two ways it can be taken, be born a second time or from born from above. Well, obviously, in this case, Nicodemus initially thought that he meant born a second time. And what does Jesus do? Jesus then corrects him. As a matter of fact, he describes it as he's correcting him two other ways. And so he says to him in verse five, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit. This is not talking about water baptism, but he's using these two elements, water and spirit. So if a person is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whereas earlier he said in verse three, you have to be born again. So in verse five, you must be born of water and spirit. Notice how, how he rephrases it again, though. The same thing. He says that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. And then drop down to verse eight. He says the wind blows where it wishes and you hear where the sound of it goes. I'm sorry. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. So three ways it describes this process. Born again, born of water and spirit and then born of the spirit. This is also reiterated where we get this from is from Ezekiel 36. We'll go there in a second. But also we're told in Titus, Paul tells us in Titus 3, 3, 5, he says that he saved us not because uh, of the works done by us in righteousness. So not by some righteous thing or work that we did. That's not why we're saved. But according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Now, this word regeneration here. There's two words in here, the word palin, which means again, and then we have the word genomai or genao, which means to be, be born. So we are born again. In this case, this regeneration he's speaking of is us being born again. And the process of us being born again is simply being born of the spirit, born from above, born of God. Why is that important? Well, if we go back, we'll see from the very beginning, from the outset in Deuteronomy, God tells them to circumcise their heart. Fix your heart. You have a bad heart. And we hear this issue about our heart being brought up all throughout the Old Testament. And so here in Deuteronomy 36, he says, moreover, the Lord, your God will circumcise your heart. So we're being told that the Lord, your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants. Now, when will he do so? Well, if we just go back a little bit further, he's speaking of after he brings them back into the land. So they're going into the land. They're going to be put out of the land because of disobedience, because of their bad heart. And then he's going to bring them back in the land. And, and then he is going to circumcise their heart. So he's going to be the one that's going to actually fix the heart because over all this time, they never will fix their heart. We see this brought up also in Jeremiah 32. 
Jeremiah 32, starting in verse 39, he says, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me always. And in doing so, making this everlasting covenant with them, he says they will never turn away from him, nor will he ever turn away from them. He, this is also right. Now, remember, by the way, before I go any further in Jeremiah 31, he's bringing to Israel this new covenant about how they're going to be saved and what he's going to do with them. God is the one that's going to institute it and going to keep it. He's the one that's going to govern it. He is going to do something whereby this new covenant, it is an unconditional covenant. And so if it's unconditional, well, then it's not conditioned upon what you do, but it's really conditioned upon what he is going to do. More about that later. And then we'll talk about our homework assignment. But then in Ezekiel 36, I'm sorry, Ezekiel 11, let's go to Ezekiel 11. He says, and I will give them one heart and put a new spirit within them. In their heart, he's going to change them. And I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes. So the reason why he's going to do so is that they may walk in my statutes. He brings this up again in Exodus, I mean, Ezekiel 36. Notice this is what he's going to do in the future. He says in verse 25, then I will take sprinkle clean water. I, I'm sorry, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be cleansed. And I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. So if you go back to uh, John 3, you recall that Jesus is bringing up those two elements, really to kind of symbolize the one spirit and water. But he's really speaking about being born from above them, being cleansed by water, this spiritual water in their heart. He says, verse 7, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. So he's going to change their heart how? By putting his spirit in them. Now, the question is going to be, or the statement might be that he's only speaking about Israel. Well, that could be true. But again, he speaks to Nicodemus about salvation. Uh, Paul brings this up to Titus about salvation. Then Jesus also in John 1, um, kind of, if we go backwards before John 3, Jesus speaks about someone being born of God as well. The same term, same thing. In verse 12, chapter 1, he says, But as many as received, him, the, but as many, hasoi is anyone can be included. So whoever the person happens to be that receives him, to that person, he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe. So if you believe, look what he says. Those who believe, they were born. There's that word again, which I say is very important. They were born, not of blood. They weren't born of blood. They weren't born of the will of flesh, nor were they born of the will of man. But here it is. But of God, they were born. So from God, they were born. So they were born of the will of God. So God is the one that causes them to be born, as 1 Peter 1, 3 says. And so this borning, this being born experience, being born from the spirit, that is the heart being regenerated. You cannot be saved or continue to be saved. You can't have a believing heart, a heart that is focused on him unless, unless your heart is regenerated. Well, wait a second. What about prior? If we're going to say that the heart was not regenerated to then, well, then how were people saved then? What sort of regenerated process was there? Was there a regeneration of the heart? in the old covenant on uh, before the old covenant well that's our issue now i contend i won't tell you why i contend that their hearts were not regenerated in the old testament but they were still saved prior to the law prior to the flood they were saved how so if the heart if the if the condition that needs to be met is the heart needs to be right how then were they saved well there's the issue so for you guys who want to take part in the classes and kind of push yourself, force yourself, discipline yourself, study, dig deep, go to Patreon, go ahead and sign up. Uh, again, it's free. We have these different homework assignments. I'm not going to tell you what the homework assignments are, but I promise you there are three different ones in different stages. We'll go over them one at a time, but I want you to go to Patreon and go ahead and check out the homework assignment and then try to answer the questions for the homework assignment. One, how were they? And you can do so also without going there. That is, how were they saved before then? But there's some other questions that I'm going to want you to do. It's going to push you, make you t make you stretch your uh, spiritual minds, look through the scriptures, and earn it. Amen.